next segment here is pre-recorded interview with Matt, Matthew Lundy yesterday. He's in Canada. I'm in Southern California. We did a pre-recorded segment. Give a listen. Check him out, mattlundystudios.com. Go ahead and roll that clip, Steve. This is David Safewater. Thanks for joining us. We're on the David Safewater Show on the Preparedness Radio Network. And we have a special guest today, Matthew Lundy. Is that how you pronounce the last name? Like Crocodile Bundy. <laughs> Sweet. Perfect. We have Matthew here now. Matthew has created a few different things in terms of 3D animation. I will have a link here available on the player. Those of you who are listening live, you can tune in if you're online. You can connect there at mattlundystudios.com. And you can go check out some of the shorts he has. I think I saw five videos on YouTube. Oh, it's funny, I have like 10 up before, but they were student work, not my best, so I'm trying to streamline the, the talent pool here. Five, five of my best works up now. Awesome. Now, the one that got me introduced to Matthew here, Matthew, I found the Stormtrooper shuffle that you made. And last week, I want to say it was Thursday or Friday, it was at 197,000 views when I saw it. It's at 322,000 views right now, and we're doing this right now on Monday, April 30th at about 3.15 Pacific Standard Time. I mean, that's like 100, over 120,000 views in less than three days. It's, it's out of control. I mean, I didn't expect such a crazy worldwide response. You know, as far as you know, whether the video is actually viral or not, I'm not clear on the details of what qualifies, but it's definitely a, a success for me personally. What's so funny about this is that I have a six-year-old son. We have, my wife and I have a six-year-old boy, a four-year-old girl, and a one-year-old baby girl. And our son Joshua has always been a dancer. Now, that group, LMFAO, is a group that I've watched because I've always loved music, but I, I, that's not really a kind of genre or, or kind of music that I like, although I do love dance music. And that song is something Thing my son has been shuffling for, I don't know, over a year now. When I played that song for him after he got home from school that day, he just went crazy. We've been showing that video to everybody, and uh, we've watched it several, several times. Now, there are so many fascinating aspects about this, and what's so exciting is that, you know, my main thing is right now, you know, I work in business, and, and I talk to people about economies all over the world now. You know, economies are suffering everywhere, and a lot of people are looking at launching into, adults are looking into launching into a second career, something that they want to do, because there's really, they're concerned about their job security. Now, now you just finished college. Yeah, university, yeah. Yeah, c congratulations. You just finished university. You're interning. Can we talk about where you're interning, or is that off the record? No, that's that's awesome. I'm interning at the Canadian Space Agency. So for Americans, that's like NASA up here in Canada. I mean, five-month security check. Finally got cleared. I had to do a background check, get fingerprints, the whole thing. But yeah, my security status is cleared, and I start work beginning of May. So I'll be modeling satellites. As well as doing some interactive applications, you know, where people can go on the site and just get a better idea of exactly what the CSA is doing. And as far as new ideas, it's a lot cheaper to build something in 3D than it is, you know, especially when you're dealing with the space agency. I mean, you just can't fool around. <laughs> so uh, a lot of concept art that needs to be done, a lot of uh, new ideas and new innovations for them. So it's going to be quite the adventure. I'm really looking forward to it. Now, are you going to be paid for that, or is it an intern that's more like experience? Fortunately, I do get paid, so start paying off some of the student loans. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Now, now for those those folks who are listening and they're thinking about launching a career, animation is something that you know I've always thought about. For you know, those are for folks who who like gaming or who are naturally inclined to do you know the uh, programming and they know they can you know they're versed in four or five different languages by the time they're 12 years old. Is it is the aggregate age of your courses? Were they all around the same age? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm in mid-20s, I guess, just as any student would be finishing university. But, um, yeah, I'd say there's a, a wide range. Unfortunately, right now, the gender split is very, very um, male. Um, like, it's a male-dominated field. Right. So, I mean, but as far as the age goes, yeah, I mean, there's some older folks there. It's, it's something that people, I think, a lot of people get up every day and they do the same thing. They do the same thing over and over again. And that's, that's a terrible way to live. I think people are also recognizing, besides the economic point that you pointed out, that being creative and doing something new every day and creating and sharing with others and inspiring others gives back so much more. And like, it makes life so much more exciting. I'm so glad I decided to go into this field. And it's not easy. I mean... I feel like I'm cheating on my girlfriend with 3ds Max 
<laughs> some nights it's she's she's awesome she's great i love her and um no, no worries no worries man so it is possible for older adults who'd like to maybe they've always been fascinated with the idea of pursuing animation is it something that in your experience is it something that you are there certain skills within that skill set that can be acquired absolutely i'm i actually came into it not realizing how how much it, it relies on classical 2D animation. You know, the, my first 3D animation class, we were given sketchbooks and told to draw because it, it's all based on the same fundamentals. You know, me, I have no, I cannot draw, you know, with a, a darn. And <laughs> it's, I don't know if you can swear on this show, so I'm just going to keep it clean. You can definitely acquire those skills. I came into it knowing nothing and four years later, like, I think I'm pretty accomplished at what I do. Now, here's some of the questions here for someone that I'm just going to pretend I'm, I'm completely ignorant. I'm not totally ignorant, but I am ignorant a large percentage of the, uh, the field here. So what kind of software, I, you know, I'm sure they can read it in the credits. What kind of software are you guys using for the production of the video of the Stormtroop Shuffle? Well, the first phase of production is capturing the motion. We use a program called Vicon Blade. It is hooked up to 12 cameras that surround uh, like a big gym mat almost, like the capture area. And then I actually got my girlfriend to capture the motion for this project. She's an awesome dancer. Learned the choreography pretty quick. So, you know, you put on the spandex suit with the ping pong balls, just like you've seen so in the So she's the, she's the one actually creating the animation for the, the motion of the soldiers? Yes, yes. And then after that, actually, we got a few a few comments on how feminine the stormtroopers were, and it's not surprising. <laughs> when, I mean, when you think about it, after that, after you capture the motion and clean it up, which is a long process, you go into a 3D application such as 3ds Max or Maya. Uh, those are those are the two big ones. There's also Soft Image and. Um, Blender. Like, there, there, there's a lot of options. And then finally, you need to edit the video. So I prefer After Effects. There's Adobe Premiere, um, Final Cut. So there's, I'd say the, the two programs I use the most are 3ds Max and uh, Blade. Wow. And th this software is not cheap. If anybody's ever looked at Final Cut, I mean, are these things that you have to purchase you have to acquire as a student during the length of the courses the thing is the school my university buys licenses so all the computers at school i mean we have a 24-hour lab it's very accessible you can go work at school the good thing about being a student especially autodesk autodesk is awesome they make 3ds max they make they make maya they'll give you a three-year fully functional no strings attached 3ds max license to learn on if you like it after that and you graduate you can actually get like a huge student discount so if you are going to school and you're interested in 3d definitely check out autodesk students promotions it it's awesome i wouldn't have been able to afford to do this if it wasn't for the student promotions autodesk offers wow that's fantastic and you know a funny note is when you talked about the ping pong balls it can literally it can be a ping pong ball is the concept. No, no, that's here. that's the layman's terms. Um, <laughs> it's a, they're called markers and markers. they're white reflective spheres, a little smaller than a ping pong ball. And there's forty sorry, fifty three markers on the body being recorded by twelve cameras. There are certain points, especially during the dance, that markers get covered up, which you need to go in and fix afterwards in Blade, that's called cleanup. Right, because the thing I think of right away is, you know, I, I was pursuing medicine and anatomy and physiology, understanding the mechanics of the body, the kinetic, the um, what is it, kinesiology behind human movement in and of itself, I think, would be consuming. Yeah, actually, the motion capture studio at my university is used by three departments. It's used by New Media, which is my uh, my school. Then it's used by kinesiology. It's also used by um, the music department for recording movements say like a violin player. The funny thing is we get a lot more leeway as far as accuracy goes. The kinesiology department, they're all about recording accurate, accurate data and like exact movements and they have very strict rules about the data that they're recording. New media, it, you get a lot more leeway because you're making entertainment. I'm, I'm glad that I'm not in kinesiology, that's for sure. 
<laughs> now let's talk about this video. Where was the concept? Are you a huge um, no you know, sci-fi fan? Well, I, I thought you were going to say LMFAO, um, <laughs> but that's why I said no. I'm a huge sci-fi fan. Yeah, absolutely. But the concept was really trying to make something. Well, let's start basically. We wanted to make something that would make people feel good. We want to make something that people would want to share. That you know, you have a crappy day and you come home and you put it on and, and it makes you smile. I worked on this with my girlfriend a lot. Like she was um, a great help and my talent, obviously, for this project. So we thought, what's popular right now? Those stupid dancing hamsters. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen? I'm sure you've seen the Kia commercial. Yes. We thought, yeah, that. I mean. And the song is just like an earworm, you know, I guess, and you can't get it out. I mean, it, like, I wasn't a huge LMFAO fan. Now I obviously have some respect for them and what they're doing. But the other funny part is the Stormtroopers, because they're all the same. So they're the perfect model <laughs> to work on. A lot of other animations, you have to read characters and, like, texture everything, and it's a lot of work. I only had to make one character. It was fantastic, and you can duplicate it a million times. It was kind of a, a cheat in a way, but it was also very smart. It was only a three-week assignment, so we definitely had to focus on what we wanted to achieve in that short time span. Now, you know what's exciting is the fact that there are already other knockoffs out there. Every day I'm shuffling. One of the big things is on, on YouTube or any kind of uh, social media that's consumed at a viral level. And, of course, we haven't quantified, but I would say, yes, your video is viral. You, you just say your video is explosive. It's really moving. And, you know, what's, what's funny about it is with these stormtroopers, these, I was talking to my wife about it the other day, uh, you know, because I study philosophy, and that's what I decided I want to do with my life. But I abandoned it because I was like, how are you going to make money? My family's like, how are you going to make money doing philosophy? Well, the funny thing about this and the irony in my brain chuckles because, like you said, stormtroopers are these stoic, <laughs> you know, unified, you know, just beings that go out and they do things. They run these errands. But here you have they somehow they've got like the, the, the fact that he's dancing under a lightsaber. I mean, that was awesome. I look at I look at that limbo and that just cracked me up. The main dance, obviously, based off the music video, I watched the music video a million times. I had 23 cameras just in that room going back and forth and to get all the shots perfect. So we have, we have the main sequence, and then what do you put around that? Because if you just throw the dance up on YouTube, that, it, it might get a few hits. It's not going to go viral. There's, there's nothing else there. I really had to rely on my sense of humor. It's the Stormtroopers got a day off. You know, maybe it was a half day, you know. <laughs> maybe that <laughs> gator's out of town, you know, like. What would they do? Well, what would they do? They'd, they'd obviously maybe, you know, jack a lightsaber and do some limo. And it is hilarious to see the stormtroopers just cut loose. You just love watching them have fun because, like you said, there's just, there's just these stoic characters. And it kind of takes them out of their shells, I guess. It's something that I haven't... I did a lot of research for other stormtrooper videos. It hasn't really been done a lot, and most of it's been people dressing up in, as stormtroopers. And, in, in crappy costumes, mind right. you. And it just didn't take you where you wanted to go. It didn't, it didn't have that level of, of imagination that I was looking for. It was just a lot of brainstorming and trying to think, what will people want to show their friends? Because like you said, you've, you've been showing everyone, right? And yeah. that makes me feel good. I'm, my sister, who works in oil and gas downtown showed her office during a staff meeting. Like, I just love to hear that, right? <laughs> because of, like, the humorous elements that surround the main sequence. It really brings the project together and makes it, you know, more than the sum of its parts. Exactly. You're exactly right. And some other questions I had for you about this video is, what made you choose LMFAO instead of, like, James Brown, I Feel Good, or like Earth, Wind, and Fire. I mean, what what was it? Is it because it's a contemporary hit right now? That's the number one reason. Mm -hmm. Actually, what really spiked the hits was when LMFAO shared it on their Facebook page. The hits just went crazy. I've no, it was it took me so by surprise that they would watch it and they would share it themselves. Like it was almost like a great honor. What kind of rights did you have to secure? Because that's what I think about. Yeah, that's a big thing. Well, the thing was it's student work. It's a parody. So 
as far as copyright goes, I'm in the clear. It's meant for nonprofit. Of course, LMFAO, I use their song, Facebook throws an ad on the video, and that's, that's fine with me. I'm just happy to, to share my work, honestly. You know, it really is about the art, isn't it? About, you know, communicating and engaging folks and, you know, people that would have never come together otherwise might have a discussion in a, in a, in a I don't know, in an in a office somewhere in the United States or anywhere in the world, mind you, in a field, uh, on a train, in public transportation, you know? I, if people, like, that's what I love about spinoffs, too, is, like, I'm happy if I can inspire someone else to do something similar, like, that's great. I think the world's a better place with, with more art in it, honestly. And I think people are at their best when they're creative. I, I feel humanity, like, benefits. I know this is probably way off topic, but... No, it's, 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 it's exactly right on topic. You're oh, exactly good. right. I didn't want to get too philosophical, especially with a philosophical man like yourself. But, yeah, it's all, it's all about sharing for me, and it's all about inspiration. Like, when I get up in the morning, like, I want to feel good. I want to feel like I've, I've made it a small mark in this world. You know, when I'm telling my grandkids about back in my day when we used keyboards and mice, you know, like, I want to you – know, you see their eyes light up. And, you know, like, I've seen – everyone I've shared this with, I've seen their eyes light up, and that's so rewarding for me. You know, it is. It is rewarding. And, you know, it, it, there's nothing wrong with wanting to make a big impression. I think you're going to do that, especially with the content you produce. Let's talk about the other video that I saw that you have. I mean, you have a few other ones as well, and I know there's more in the works. Evolution of the wheel. You know, I looked at that, and first there was no audio, and I was like, oh, okay, he did this one for silent, whatever kind of project he had to do it for. But then the music starts. Yeah, it's, I mean, I'm a huge music fan, play guitar. That's more of my style of music, um, a little electronic. Although, with my guitar playing, I'm a huge classic rock fan as well. That video was based on, on, on that song by the Prodigy, Diesel Power. It's cut to the beat so nicely that it just gives you that tingle. It syncs the senses together. And you get that moment, it's just so beautiful watching and hearing like the music at the same time as these incredible visuals. And that's, you know, when you watch this, when, when folks have a chance to watch this, go to Matt Lundy Studios on YouTube. You can find his channel there. Uh, you know, he's done some really good work. You look at the evolution, I look at the texture of the wheel and the angles. That and, project you know, took four months to do that four was, months yeah that was one minute video advanced studio project so stormtrooper shuffle three week project that took four months to do for a one minute video it's funny because i didn't think that the stormtrooper shuffle would be more popular than evolution of the wheel because that's really i think more in tune with with me as an artist i'm really glad that you mentioned it i'm i'm very happy about the publicity i've gotten from stormtrooper shuffle but I think as an artist, Evolution of the Wheel reflects more accurately on um, me as an individual. No, you're, you're exactly right. You know, that's one thing within, and, and we can get philosophical here on this, on uh, the content that we're doing, because, you know, w when you look at the evolution of the wheel, you take a concept, and you're like, okay, well, on the superficial level, if somebody's going to take the time and watch a video, like, okay, it's a minute. You're like, oh, cool. You can see how a wheel goes from crude to you know, four wheels that we're using on a vehicle, or even two wheels, or even one wheel if you're using unicycle. It's about the wheel evolving, but also about the environment evolving. You start out in a, in a room, in just a, a plain room, and then you go into a desert, you know, with some more texture. Then, you know, a nice winter shot, get to see more of the background. By the time you hit the bicycle wheel, I mean, you have a full city in the background, and the car, like, when the car comes up, the neighborhood, I mean, whew. Like building, just building a neighborhood to spin the streaming camera around. It was, so the concept for that project was evolving the medium of 3D at the same time as the wheel itself is evolving. Does that make sense? Absolutely. These are simultaneous. These are almost uh, the correlational. Yeah. And it, I wanted to make every environment different because it is hard if you go through five environments in a minute, you got to make each of them stand out. So, I wanted the wheel to react differently. When it's rolling along the ice, it looks like it's sliding. I love that. Along the blocks, like you mentioned, it's bumpy. I like that. Along the sand, it's like trudging through. Like that's what makes these projects stand out, in my, in my opinion, is seeing not only the animation itself, but how the wheel reacts with the environment that it's in. 
fascinating concept. Thank you for taking that little, a level deeper here. It's funny though that when you finish the when we finish the video, the car is green. Yeah, it's actually a model, model after my own green Mustang. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah, I'm it's, looking at I'm looking at the uh, the length of animation and to make that the rim so shiny and uh, wow, the asphalt. Yeah, it, it's. It's a good thing I got rid of my old animations on YouTube because it there's some rough stuff. I mean, even texturing, like, it's taken me a while to really refine my craft. You know, as long as I can keep showing people things that make them think and make them want to be creative themselves or even just to make their day a little brighter, that that's what I'm trying to do. Absolutely, Matt. It's been a pleasure. You set the bar very high for yourself, so you're going to go good places. We do appreciate the time here. Folks, this has been... David Safewater interviewing here Matt Lundy, the creator of Stormtrooper Shuffle.